Miniature Making Video is sponsored by Hay Gears. The last time I worked on the Captain's Quarters, we had this really satisfying, beautiful end of the video where things were coming together and they were really in place and it was just amazing. But in this video, I'm going to be working on a side of the project that is a little less satisfying. Thankfully, I will have a little help from my new Hay Gears printer that was sent to me to use in this video. More on that very soon. This is the part of the project I was talking about. Oh, Stormy's here. <laughs> this is the part of the project I was talking about. This is the back of the captain's quarters. So the 17th century portion is right here. I turned everything around and on the back is just pink foam board, which is the bulk of what it is made out of. I have the mirror for the infinity hallway. I have some wires. I have this big open hole and just lots of pink. So I hope to at least get started on covering this vast area. I drew out a plan. I took a picture of this. I drew out a plan and it's a lot. It's a lot to get done, but I'm hoping I can get through as much as possible in this video. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is covering up this mirror. Right now it's just taped on there with packing tape. I don't know what past era was thinking, honestly. Let's get started on something to cover it up. Here is my very roughly drawn sketch of what I want to do on the back of this project. I'm starting with this panel that's going to cover the mirror, and then I want to at least start on the rest of the project, which would be the entire back of the panel, and prep where the railings and the stairs are going to end up being. I think that's probably all I'm going to be able to get to, because the panel is going to be quite an undertaking. As you can see, the mirror is pretty large and I have a few other things I would need to cover up. So I cut out a piece of pink foam. Yes, I'm continuing with the pink foam that's going to mostly cover this up. I also sketched on a rough outline of where the infinity hallway is on the other side of the wall because I want this to be what I'm calling the transport panel. It's going to have something that looks uh, like this. <laughs> this is one of the first prints that came off of my Hay Gears printer, which I will be showing you a demonstration of how it looks and how it works, but I did want to show you the beautiful quality of the resin and how the prints do come off. They look so good. I have a few of these already printed to go. I am still missing one print, which is the one I'm going to demonstrate the printer for you with. But the main idea behind these greebly looking items is they would be some kind of transport cannon that would shoot the atoms of whoever is walking down the infinity hallway into whichever place they're wanting to go, whether it's down onto a planet or into another spaceship. So this is why I needed to go ahead and print a few of these as I got started because I do want to make allowances. I want them to set inside of the foam. So I went ahead and cut out where these were going to go. In my original rough sketch, I had four of the smaller cannon pieces, but I think I'm just going to add three. I like how it looks a little bit better that way. I don't have to worry about cutting the hole too neatly because once the prints are set in place, you won't actually see the inside of the hole. And I'm liking how it's looking so far. I do think it looks like an inset cannon into the foam. So I'm going to cut the other holes. As I said, I'm not going to glue them in. I'm waiting for that other print. And before I glue them in, I want to finish the surface with some more greebly items so that it does have that spaceship look. I found these wire covers that I had used in the lighting I did on my Adams Family house. And because I want some lights to go across the front of this panel, I'm going to try and use these here. I'm making a spot towards the top and another one towards the bottom, just underneath the two cannon openings. I'm using a screwdriver to punch through the lower level of foam. And I have found that for some reason, this is just really an easy way to get a nice hole in the foam rather than trying to have to get an entire craft blade through it, which craft blades aren't typically long enough. Uh, it does kind of make a mess on the back, but if I don't have to see it, the back using a screwdriver is really helpful. And then I'm just going to glue the top piece down to the lower piece. Now on to the greeblies, as promised. I have been saving up these laser cut sheets 
for a while and these are going to make easy work of making this a more interesting surface to insert the transport cannons. The first step is really just to mark out the areas I need to remove and I'm using a flush cutter to do this and also a craft knife for the areas that are a bit curved and would be hard to do with the flush cutters. And before I glue anything down, I need to sand the surface of the foam board. I have found this helps so much when trying to glue something down. And then I can just lay that in place and already it's looking so much more spaceshipy, which I think we decided we could use as an actual term. And I'm just going to keep adding pieces and cutting off pieces until I have something that looks like this. Now I realized the sides of the foam were a little bit rough, so I am going to be covering them up with some dollhouse band-aids. These are going to cover up the sides of the pink foam and then fold over the top of the pieces I just created. This is going to make sure that these pieces stay glued down even better and also, of course, cover up the foam texture that we don't want to see. Once I paint everything with a silver metallic, it will all look like sheet metal that's kind of been formed over something and maybe a little dented up over time, which I am okay with. I also added in some wood blocks and other pieces I had in my collection. This is the fun part of the Greebly process. You can really just kind of put whatever you want wherever. I also had Rob send me this package a while ago with a bunch of plastic kit parts which he had mentioned that Adam Savage uses a lot in his builds, so I was excited to add a few of these in. Creating this with the pink foam makes it really easy to add pieces in. The only thing is you just have to make sure they're really secure so they don't get pulled out of the foam in the future. I had some of these plastic straws that I had originally purchased for this project, and I just hadn't used very many of them, so I was happy to add them in to the side here to look like some sort of piping. And I don't know what this shape is supposed to be, maybe a part of a car. You can let me know if you recognize it, but it was fun to glue down. Now I can add the transport cannon into the center and all the helper cannons, I guess I would call it. Or maybe they're like things that help it focus or laser focus. I'm not quite sure. You can let me know your theories. And since we need to make that last piece, let me introduce you to the UltraCraft Reflex 3D printer by Haygears. It is such a cool, high quality machine, and they sent it along with so many different types of resin, especially this transparent, I'm excited to try out. The resin is really cool because it fits into this back part of the machine and auto fills. This means you have no contact with the resin when you have to refill the vat. It has sensors that lets it know how much it needs to add in, and every time you start a print, it adds more. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine on, it's basically a one-stop production platform that provides users with a set of 3D printing tools, starting with a computer program that helps you get your file set up and ready for printing. It was very efficient and I was most impressed by the layer by layer print analysis. I messed up the way that I supported a print and the printer basically let me know and stopped the print because it knew it would fail. I've never had a printer do that before. Usually they just keep printing and printing and you have a mess to clean out once you realize that it's failed. But the Hay Gears printer let me know that it failed, stopped the print immediately so there was no messy cleanup. The front of the printer has this great interface so you can see exactly how much time is remaining and what you're printing. Because Hay Gears has been in the industrial printing business for more than seven years, you can get a commercial quality print each time just by using this personal desktop printer. Along with the resin and printer, they also sent me this amazing curing and washing station. The curing station uses true UV light and inner cavity heating. This means that your print can obtain stronger mechanical properties once cured. And the washing station is like nothing I've ever seen before. After my print came off of the build plate, I could put it directly into this wash bucket. The bucket goes on top of this machine, which gives it a vigorous shaking, and it's actually really fun to watch. I ended up having to put it on the ground because it does quite a bit of moving around, and my table wasn't strong enough to keep it from shaking everything else on the table. But this feature is what got the print so very clean. 
It actually comes with two buckets because Hay Gears is dedicated to cutting down contact with resin. So you put one bucket on top of the other. You make sure and open the valves so that they have airflow inside, and then you release the alcohol from the top bucket into the lower bucket. And I'll actually let you hear the sound of it moving. And once that's completely drained, you can remove the lid off of the top bucket and you don't have to stick your hand in alcohol water that has liquid resin in it. You can go straight to your print. So here's kind of a blurry picture. You'll be able to see it a little clearer in a second. Once it's dry, I can put it into the curing station and choose between either high performance curing for better material performance or rapid curing for clearer detail. And it may have something to do with the dual UV wavelength final curing. I'm not quite sure, but every time I've followed these steps, I've come out with beautiful prints. So here's how it looks up close. It's just, it's so smooth and it's beautiful. I love how it came out. Now there are still some barbs from the supports, which I did not take the time to sand off. I will show you sanding a little bit later with a different print, but I left those on there because I think it will catch the glue a little bit better once I insert it into the panel. Once everything is glued in place, I can go ahead and cover it with a layer of Mod Podge. It would definitely be faster to coat this in a layer of Plasti Dip or something with uh, spray paint, but because I'm using foam, I know that it will melt if I do that. So I'm carefully going over with a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint to create the base coat. Now I'm adding a layer of metallic silver, which I have done with almost every surface in this project. But it really does make everything look cohesive from the inside of the spaceship, the cargo hold, to this outside panel that will be something you see when you first walk up to the project. It's already starting to look like an old beat up metal panel, but we're not done yet. When I started adding lights in the last video, I knew I wasn't going to be able to stop no matter what side of the project I was working on. Again, I'm using these cable concealers. This is what the box looked like. They usually help you with your TV cables or computer cables. Uh, today, they're just going to help me with my lighting needs. I'm cutting off a piece that's about the width of this front panel, although I'm extending it a little bit because I am going to have the lights come out the side. These are strip LED lights, the kind that you can use underneath your kitchen cabinets. I'm just marking out where each individual LED will shine through this piece, and I'm going to use my Dremel to drill through. I'm drilling on top of this piece of cardboard so I don't drill through my desk. I did this for a total of two pieces. There's going to be one towards the top and one towards the bottom for two rows of lights. I want these to look a little bit different than the other lights, and so I'm going to try and turn them red. To do this, I'm using some plastic recycling from my recycle bin, and I'm just going to sand both sides so it gives it a little bit of tooth, mark out the piece that I need that's going to slide inside of the cable concealer, and then I'm just using a Sharpie to color that area to make it red like I want it to be. Then I can just cut it out and make sure that it's going to fit inside the plastic piece right behind all of the holes I previously drilled. Now before I glue this in, I do want to paint this piece so I'm not accidentally painting the plastic that I just made in the holes. I'm painting that with a silver to match everything else. Then I can use some Fabrifix to glue the acetate inside of this piece and allow that to dry. This was a pretty easy process. I was kind of surprised on how easy it was. Uh, I was a little intimidated by lights at the beginning, but now I'm really enjoying the process of trying to figure out how to get the effect that I want. The plastic was looking just a little bit flat, so I'm going to use some diamond glaze and put a drop in each one of these holes to help it look a little bit more like each one is an individual bulb. After I've let that dry, I can add my pieces to the front of the transport panel. Using some Fabrifix glue, I just line it up with the pencil marks I made previously and glue it down in place. After I've let the whole thing dry, I can take my strip LED lights and thread them through the piece. I'm threading them upside down because I was having a hard time getting them the other way, and then I flipped them over. I'm going to carefully line them up to make sure that the LED lights are behind the holes that I created with my Dremel. 
Once I know exactly where it needs to go, I'm going to use some electrical tape to wind over the lights that I don't want to be shown. These are going to go through the foam in the back and come out the back of the panel. Here you can see me threading it through, so you will not be able to see the LED lights, only the ones that are inside of the cable concealer. I connected the two pieces together, connected it to the outlet piece, and here you can see them all lit up. On camera, they do look a little pink. In person, they're a little bit more red. They are a bit pink in person too, so I might try and see if I can find my glass paint to make them a little bit more red. But I do like the results, and I think it's looking very spaceshipy. Now that I have these light cables on the back of the panel, I do need a little cavity for them to be inserted. So I am again going to extend this panel with some foam board. This is going to allow a place for the cables to be behind it and not get smashed. This is going to be a double thick foam piece, so I'm using my Fabrifix to glue the second layer on top. I am just fixing each problem or each new <laughs> opportunity for invention as I go along because I really didn't know what this was going to look like in the beginning and now I have a three-tiered panel and it's just one of those things when it comes to miniatures you have to figure it out as you go. So now you can see there's a lot more room for these light connections in the back. Very quickly, I'm going to greebly this back panel so you don't have to watch that whole process again and I'm going to start pulling out specific panels with other metallic paints. I'm using an antique copper and a gold paint just to make this a little bit more interesting and as if different types of metal have been used to repair it throughout the years. Of course I can't forget my watered down layer of black paint which is going to bring out all the details and add some age to the panel. This is supposed to be a panel on a very old ship that's been kind of hanging on over the years and so a little bit of dirt and grime is just what the space doctor ordered. On other parts of the ship where I've made metal panels, I've also added some dry brushing of brown paint. I'm going to do that here as well. That continues to add to the grime, not necessarily rust, just kind of grime and machine type stuff that's built up over the years. So here you can see the finished transport panel. I am so happy with how it came out. This is not what I had envisioned when I started, but uh, I'm happy this is what happened. It really it looks, I like, I like it. I think it looks cool. And now for the even more daunting task of attaching this to the back part of the captain's quarters. This is a pretty big panel. And I realized even with all of my measuring and changes I made, it still wasn't fitting flush over that huge mirror, which by the way, I did try to cut down and it was not, it was not working. So I just added some strips of foam board around the edge and that seemed to help a lot. Now for the task of securing it to the back of the captain's quarters, I'm going to use these lids from the bendy straws I used before. I found a dowel that fits perfectly inside of the lids, and I'm thinking if I insert these into the foam, glue them in place, then I can attach the dowels to the back of the panel, and I will have just an easier way for the foam to support the weight of the panel. So I'm using my X-Acto blade to cut in and insert these pieces. Now I used Fabrifix for this and it's, it's worked every other time, but for some reason it started melting the foam on the inside of the panel. So these caps just fell inside of the panel and there were these huge gaping holes. So I had to redo it and use tacky glue this time. I don't know, I don't know what happened, but Anyway, I have these extra holes now, so maybe I'll put some magnets in there because I do want to add some magnet attachment, not just to rely on the dowels holding up the panel. I put the dowels in the caps and added some wet paint to the ends. This is going to help me know where I need to attach the dowels to the back of the panel. I hold the panel up to where I think it needs to go, press it into the dowels, and then the wet paint on the back of the panel lets me know where I need to attach them so that they will fit perfectly into the caps I had inserted into the foam. So here's our first test to see if it worked. It's not absolutely 100% perfect, but it is good enough for me. And once I get rid of the pink of the foam, you won't be able to tell that it's not 100% perfect. 
I plugged in the lights and here is our first look at the transport panel that is attached to the back. So that is finished. Now we can move on to working on some of these other pieces such as the entire back and the railings are something I want to start making in this video. Half of this project is just fixing things that past Aira did and left for me. Thanks, past Aira. I spent some time patching up and removing wires off of the back that I had done to the front of the project. I did that before I even considered that the back would maybe be seen one day, and so now I'm kind of paying for it, but they were pretty easy to repair. I also wanted to cut the door that goes from the front to the back. I think it's going to be an important part of connecting the two as it being in one spaceship. At first I didn't know if I was going to create this because I have an entire control center that I need to find space for, but I do really think I want this door in this area. So I went ahead and cut it and I will figure out the control panel later. There's not going to be too much greebling going on on the back of this project because there's going to be levels of stairs and platforms and so I am going to be doing a little bit but I want it to be fairly subdued. So I only used a few of the leftover laser cut bits and then covered everything with some more black Mod Podge. This was kind of fun to finally cover up some of the last bits of the pink foam and really starting to make this area look more finished like the rest of it. I had mentioned earlier that I wanted to start working on the platforms that are going to help people walk across the back of the project. Well the captain at least, and I laser cut these out to start creating them. I also ended up with a lot more triangles, which if you've been around for a while, you'll remember I have a bag of triangles, so now I will have even more triangles, triangles for the rest of my life. Each of these pieces are going to be glued together so that I have a double thickness. This is going to help the strength because these are going to be basically sticking out from the wall and could possibly easily break off, so I want to make them as strong as possible. Then I'm going to glue two of them in an L shape. This is what's going to create my platform that will eventually become a walkway. I have these tiny triangles that I'm going to put in the corners to hopefully help support the vertical piece, which is basically acting as a banister. I'm using more of this plastic crisscross grating that I used for when I made the steps and some of the other platforms in the spaceship portion. These I just need to cut out the areas where those little triangles are so it fits on top. This is going to be the area where the captain and other crews, robots, cats can walk by if they need to access the back part of the cargo bay hold. So I'm not going to paint these quite yet because I don't have the right paint to match everything else, but I am going to be able to use these to lay out my thought process for the back. So even though they should fit like this, I am going to be putting them the opposite way so they can lay flat against the back. I know this is not the most ideal way to look at this piece, but I had to put it on the floor so I could move things around. If it was vertical, I'd have to tape things in place and it'd just be a lot more frustrating to play and figure out what my actual ideas are. I made these stairs in a previous video and now it's time to lay them out and really figure out what this is going to look like. I made a total of three platforms. I can make more if I need to, but I thought only three is really what I need for the captain to be able to get up to the door and to get over to the top of the transport panel in case there's any fixes that are needed. I got brave and cut one of the stairs, so I guess I'm committing to that now. And then I laid out another stairway trying to figure out how that is going to get the captain and crew from the lower level up to the doorway. So this is what I came up with. I am pretty happy with it and I asked Stormy her opinion. I think she's happy with it too, maybe. So I decided to trace outlines of where I had placed everything. This is going to help me so that I don't have to lay everything out on the floor. It is rather tedious to take everything out of this project and lay it down. So now that I have it traced out, I know where each individual piece needs to go. 
I also used the Reflex printer to print this tiny Serenity ship from the show Firefly, and it gave me an idea to possibly have another ship display, kind of echoing the one that's on the inside for the 17th century, but have a spaceship display on the spaceship side. So I was trying to figure out places it could go. So I'm gonna give you an option. Should it go under the stairs, option one, at the end of this walkway above the transport panel, option two, or should it go over here to the side of the door, which will be option three, or underneath the bottom stairs, which is going to be option four? Where do you think I should build this in? At this point, I was kind of at a stopping point for my brain and decision-making process, so I thought it would be fun to paint this little firefly miniature and just see how well I can sand and paint this piece to get it the way I want it to look. The print is very smooth like all of the other prints, but I was glad to see it was taking paint so well. I knew it had taken the base coat I put on the transport cannons really well, but of course I know a lot of you make miniatures where you're looking at doing detailed paintings. And even though I don't consider myself a professional or even good at painting miniatures like some of the other channels I've seen, I wanted to give it my best shot. So of course I did a black base coat with a silver first coat of paint. And honestly, the reference photos I found for the Serenity kind of had me confused on what color it actually was. So I used a watered down coat of this antique copper to give the metallic paint a little bit more variation. I used a very, very wet coat of watered down black paint, and just trust me, you will be able to see all of the details come out. Look at all of the black paint go into those little tiny crevices, and you can see just how detailed this is. It does kind of tone down after a little bit, so you can see just here, it's not even dry all the way, and you can still see that beautiful metallic paint shining through. So I let that dry completely and then I went back with a detail brush to bring out some of the features of the ship. And I don't really know if I was painting this correctly, uh, but I was having fun. So you'll have to let me know if you are a Firefly expert, if I need to change anything, it wouldn't be too hard to change it. But I just pulled out different things that I could find and I also added some more black paint in the windows and also in the front and the back of the engine areas. So this is my final little firefly piece. Let me know if you have some other ships you think I should print and paint. Um, it's kind of hard to find them. This was one of the best ones that I could find and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Now, as mentioned before in the video, I do wanna try out this transparent resin. I have tried to print transparent resin with other machines and other brands, and it always came out super cloudy and yellow. So I was excited to test this out and see how it looked in the end. And even on the build plate, they look like little glass gems. They're so, so beautiful. And I was excited to see how they would actually cure. I tried a few different ways, but curing it for five minutes seemed to do the trick. And it just, I printed this guy. He's not for the captain's quarters but I wanted to see how a ghost might turn out. You might remember my Victorian ghost from a project long time ago. I was not super happy with how that ghost turned out, but I think this is a beautiful print and I am so excited to try it more in the future. I don't quite know how to get rid of the um, connection or the support marks yet, but it's something I'm really excited to try out. I also printed, these are for the captain's quarters, these really cool little alien plants. Now when it first printed, it was interesting because these really small pieces were flexible, kind of like a gummy bear type feeling, which actually turned out to be really good because they weren't as breakable or as flimsy when they first come out. But then after I cured them, they hardened up and are really, really strong pieces. So I really liked working with this clear transparent resin and I decided to put these into the captain's plant room. Now, now this guy, I think I might put him over into the fair field. Maybe the skeletons need a little ghost friend for a little bit. If you're a long time Fairfield viewer, you'll have to let me know what you think about a ghost living with the skeletons. I don't know. We'll see. 
Back to creating the flowers for the captain, I stuffed the bottom of the flower pots with some paper towel and then covered it with hot glue so that none of the glue I'm about to put in there will soak into the paper towel. And then I put the flowers into the hot glue so it would hold it in place. I'm putting together some sand, paint, and glue and mixing it all up to make an alien type soil for these clear flowers. I think these will really stand out in the captain's plant room. It was kind of difficult to get the soil in there. I just had to let it drip and then I would just tap the pot on the surface to allow it to move around into the crevices. And I'm just going to let this dry overnight because this will take quite a while to dry. I used two of these little trumpet looking flowers and then one of these pickleball looking flowers. I think having them printed in the transparent resin is going to really have them stand out. So here are my two miniature additions to the captain's quarters. You can kind of see here that the soil dried really lumpy, but I like the look it gives it. I, I think it still adds to the alien feel of the clear flower, the green soil that has little empty patches in it. I just hope for the sake of my ribbit bot that they're easy to take care of. So here's a final look at everything I created in this video. I think the captain's pretty pleased with her first ship for the spaceship collection that will be shown on the back of the project. And here you can see really the vast scale of the rest of what we need to do on the back. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Big thank you again to Hey Gears for sponsoring this video and for sending me this printer to try out. I had a lot of fun getting to learn how it works and seeing the results of the prints. If you want to find out any more information about Hey Gears or their products, you can follow the links that are down in the description box below. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye! But in this video, we're going to be working on something a little you need to stop making licking noises. So I hope to at least get started on fixing up this. Yes, I know I love you too. I'm almost done editing the video and I forgot to add a line. Just a little bitty line. We still have quite a bit to go.